What's up there, YouTube? It's your boy, Charlie T, back again with another video. I have special guests with me, an icon, a legend, the extraordinaire, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> One of my dearest, bestest friends, Donovan. Introduce yourself. Hey guys, I'm Donovan Jael. And you can find him on Instagram. I'll leave it in the no, link yes. below. <laughs> He's a stylist. He also has his own jewelry line. It's called Bean and Valid. You can also find that on it, uh, his Instagram, which will be in the link below in the description box. So make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Share my videos on top of that, okay? And then I'm going to post my Instagram link down in the description box below too, because even though it's on the main part of my page, I feel like a lot of you guys still mm -hmm. you know, forget it's it. Clear. It's not some <laughs> the math ain't math. It's so <laughs> it's not yes. mm. <laughs> this ain't gonna work. It's, it's not. <laughs> so I also supply my Instagram in the link uh description box below. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So we first met oh. back in 2019. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first time we met on like, I guess a dating app, mm -hmm. but it was really kind of pitched like it was a social media. It really was. It's called Tammy. No, this video is not sponsored by anything I mentioned, although I would not be opposed. No. Um, <laughs> the cool one about you, but it was the app that I was trying for probably the second time ever, if not the very first time, something like that. And I was like, okay, this is kind of cute. This is different. And I had met you and immediately we clicked. Like, you would thought we were friends for the longest like, time. We were, I ain't seen you in so long. <laughs> What's been going on? Like, we got on the phone, we on the phone for five oh hours just kiki and like, and did I mention like, no. oh, this what happened? No. Like, it was, oh my God. <laughs> like, I don't even remember like where I was really at in my life, like socially, but I remember like, I really didn't expect anything to come from Timey. I also feel like Timey was kind of a waste for the most part. I was <laughs> <out> of, uh, <laughs> I saw from our friendship, like, yeah. Thing that we, a few things that we bonded on, of course, were um, besides fashion um, and just our love for culture, like just being around different people, networking, our behinds off. Um, we shared with one another. I can't even remember like how we got on a topic. I feel like low key, I like opened I feel up like, conversation yeah. just because yeah. I'm like that. But um, I had shared that I was HIV positive and just like sharing my story, it probably was pertaining to, you know, a situation or whatever. Right. So, um, and then that's when uh, he had shared his story with me. <laughs> me too. And, yeah. I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, really. That's how it always is, too. <laughs> and you were actually, believe it or not, you were my very first friend um, that I knew was HIV positive. What? Yeah. Yeah. Because up until like that point, the only people that I knew, well, person that I knew was my ex, you know, my, right. like, my ex ex, like so right. years prior. So I never had like any friends. Like anyone just, yeah. yeah. Who would be able to understand right. everything. <laughs> I don't have your story. Go ahead and share a little bit. I had a retract my <laughs> I found out. I was originally like volunteering at Pride. I would go to Pride like every year with my best friend. Um, and we would always get tested. It was kind of just a tradition. Like I wasn't sexually active like that. That was actually like the second time in my life I had had sex. Earlier that year, I was like sick. Of course, it was like the traditional, like I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was, what was going on. And I told you I worked at Kroger before too. That was the year I worked at Kroger. And <laughs> Like throughout the whole orientation process, I was just like drained. I was exhausted. I couldn't mm -hmm. like, I could barely stay awake. I could barely like eat. I could barely like do anything. And I'm a busy bitch. But Hello. I'm always moving. It takes so, a while to tire us. So for me to have like just been sitting down and doing nothing was kind of like 
what is wrong with me? Am I depressed again? So I finally got tested that year at Pride and the guy sat me down and was like, so your test came back reactive. I was like, what does that mean? That was how I found out and the person that I had contracted it from was actually someone I had been dating for like some months. Like, mm -hmm. and it was kind of hurtful because by the time I had found out and got tested, we were no longer like spe on speaking terms because I felt like all they wanted was one thing. Right. And uh, it was it was a mess. I just, but thank goodness for like peer programs and stuff because it was rough. A struggle for a minute. Like, yeah. What were your immediate reaction? Like when you were first told, what was your reaction to that? It was. I really wasted a body. Like, I really wasted a body. I wasted, like, time, like, staying to myself and not having sex. I felt like if I was going to get, like, the biggest taboo, like, thing you can have in the community, like, I may as well have been out here, like, just doing whatever. Right. And it kind of really hurt my feelings. And it's not to shade anybody. But it really hurt my feelings because I really went through my life, like, sexually inactive, not really bothering with anybody. I really didn't date like that. I really right. didn't worry about boys. Like, the one time I did, well, the second time I did, it was like, this happens. Just kind of, I was taken aback for the most part because it was like, I did all of this, like, keeping myself, like, to myself, and I naturally yeah. was doing it. But when I would think about stuff, I would, like, continue to stay to myself. And it was like, kind of hurtful like I felt like betrayed I had felt like I did myself a disservice and I had done like like I kind of blamed him for a minute like for a while but then I was like well it's also my fault like I want to say like for an hour or so I was like very upset with him then the rest of like the following like four or five days I was like crying on and off I was really just I was mad at me mm -hmm. I think that was that's long to the show. <laughs> like I, I definitely understand uh, wholeheartedly, but I think what the problem is oftentimes is like obviously we have to protect ourselves, right? Um, but the, at the same time, it's like when you're with somebody that you're trusting, right? Um, because let me backtrack here. So there's still this stigma. It's not as bad as it was years ago, but it still is there. It's still probably they, enough. Yeah, like people just assume that if you're positive, you're a hoe. And yeah. it's like, oh, how many people did you sleep with? And it's like, little yeah. do you know, I can still count on one hand. That was kind of a big thing for me too. Right, and that's, yeah, not to, that's not to, you know, discredit anybody who has, you know, more bodies or anything. But at the same time, it's like, because it, that stigma is there in, in the negative light, mm -hmm. um, it's like, okay, so you're associating that with that and that's not right. good. Because there are, there are people out there who, you know, have a lot of, you know, sex partners or just right. in general, right. you know, been out there, but they are also careful, you know? So right. um, it's on our end, it's our responsibility to make sure we protect ourselves no matter what, but at the same time, the other party should be open and honest with you, knowing that you're trusting them, right. you know, with information, like you wouldn't expect them to withhold, or if, if exactly. they didn't know, they're not protecting themselves because they just out there, you right? Know, no, whatever, and I loose. think that was the thing for me too. Like, I, I'm always been like, a, if you had just told me, I would have been fine because then I would have had the choice. Yeah, but and then I realized I don't think he even knew like about his own situation because mm -hmm. he was like someone who had been in and out of jail for a while. It was kind of like you probably don't even know for you what's going on, right? And I found out later on like thing, little clues and like hints that was like, yeah, he really can't know for himself. Mm. Like, cause I went back and visited him like some years later. And I was like, you want? Wow. I don't know. And not, you know. Wow. 
it was crazy. I would say things happen for a reason and some people take that like, what? What do you mean? Like, so you feel mm -hmm. like you got, you contracted HIV for a reason. And for me personally, I say yes, because I'm gonna keep it short. Basically, before I contracted HIV, honestly, there was a lot of things I took for granted, you mm -hmm. know, especially when it came to um, my life and people, you know, that's not to say everybody, but just a lot of certain things. Um, and I had a whole new perspective in life um, after that, you know, I learned to really day by day do what I want in terms to what makes me happy. Right. Um, it took some time, a long time to still get there, you yeah. know, but it, I, I feel like still a part it's of the start of a new growth. journey. Yeah. 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 It's like, so it, either it's way, just, you had to get there, but yeah. this kind of was a foot yeah, it was, <laughs> it was like some lit up like, behind yeah. my tail and was like, oh, 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 oh okay, like, well, hi. Uh, I was kind of in a weird space, like going into the situation or mm -hmm. into my diagnosis where I was kind of like, you know, I know I like fashion, but what do I, what am I doing? Da, 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 da. And this was like my second year, my, yeah, I was a sophomore in college at the time. So it was kind of like, well, what do you want to do? what do you really want to do like not just now but with your life yeah yes in and general I, like yeah and it was something i took for granted too i did because i didn't really care about living so much until i felt like oh girl i'm in a position to where if i don't take care of myself so yeah because prior to where you getting tested? Like all the obviously, I like, know you say yeah, you know, like, like partners, but it was but like, like yeah, it wasn't like even though it was a tradition and I knew like it was serious, I didn't know it was serious, mm -hmm. and it was like it was more so a tradition versus me actually being concerned, yeah, and versus me actually being proactive about my own. views on when it comes to relationships. So prior to you contracting HIV and therefore then after how did you feel about relationships like did you feel like it would be an easy transition dating other people or did you find it difficult because like just your own mental or was it actually difficult because when um and I, I want to assume that you know you were disclosing that information because again um not every state in the nation of the U.S. um you it's not mandatory it's not mandated for you to disclose your status um, with uh, someone that you're going to have intercourse with. However, it would be nice. <laughs> it would be nice to know. Uh, it would be nice to know. It would have so, been nice to know. Like, oh. So, um, for your sake, um, if you were, or if you are a person to disclose uh, to anybody that you're going to have intercourse with, has it been an easy um transition since after for you to you know find somebody or has it been difficult um and then also what was it like prior to you um being diagnosed with hiv for anyone who um had hiv themselves how what were your views on that being intimate with them um so i wasn't really intimate when i was younger <laughs> i didn't like i said the person who i contracted it from that was my second time having sex mm -hmm. so i didn't really done that, didn't really right. do that, wasn't really, you know, part of that. Right. I didn't really, like, I didn't really think about it. I feel like throughout most of my life and even now, like, I kind of lead my life worried about my life, mm. like, as in what I have in this moment. Like, I worry about, I treasure and I value my friends, my family, like, where I'm going, my career, that's always been, like, one of the biggest things for me. And I feel like I've never really had issues with dating and I've never worried about it too much. And I feel like because I never worry about dating, it's always been kind of easier for me. After my diagnosis, I did kind of shut down for a minute because I was with someone at the time. And it was kind of like, I started to kind of feel undesired. Mind you, he was a virgin. I started to feel undesired. I started to feel judged. I started to feel like, and not just because of him, but just the thought that like, 
well, not only are you is he a virgin and he's kind of like weird about sex, mm-hmm. but or like he's a little standoffish and a little um, towards sex. But it's like mm, if we were to have sex, how would that go and what would it look like? Because oh, yeah. well, now I'm positive, and then I feel like moving forward, it kind of became something that as I've matured, like it. It has also just been something to, or has been something to just be aware of and something like I do would dispose, like yeah. if I were still single, like, but I don't, I also don't participate like in hookups or anything. And when I did, that was, I had one person, like right. a whole situation, like we talked about that, like, yeah. so it was kind of like, we knew what we were doing, we knew what was going on, da, da, da. And then I also feel like because I'm from such a sexually liberal city, it's kind of like there's so many people that you wouldn't have even realized are like undetectable or positive or whatever until you are too. And then everyone's comfortable just disclosing it, throwing it out there like, oh yeah, girl, take it. Like, no, right. Like, 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 you know, okay. like All right. and it, yeah. And I feel like that kind of helped me too. Because so many people are so. Like, cause I've gone to like aside from relationships, like I'm all the time. Like, I keep meeting people who are like, "Oh, I'm not sure. Me too. <laughs> like, uh, oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> and then it's kind of like going into relationships. I keep coming across people who are, well, I, when I was like kind of dating, I was coming across people who were positive or who were at least like knowledgeable. Like before when I'm dating now, the guy was like. So he was on prep, like with or without dating me. He was on prep. He had dated someone before that was positive. The guy I was like talking to before that. He was fully aware of my status. He like knew how to navigate things. Da da da. So I feel like it actually hasn't been as hard. Yeah, like, but I also feel like dating has kind of never been hard. Yeah, I feel like. It kind of, like you said, it also depends on the demographics, right? Like, yeah. Where do you live? Yeah. Like, you know, so. so I kind of got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> to be where I am, like. Yeah. The like the area, the kind of people, you know. Yeah. I definitely. Those girls can't judge me. Listen. We're all on the same boat. Look. But. That is all for today's video. Let me know that you watched all the way to the end by commenting Charlie T's birthday, okay? Because it was my birthday weekend and we were turning up and showing up and showing out. It was so much fun. That's a a ball, a ball. Uh Stay tuned for more videos coming you guys' way. All right, peace.